Hello and welcome to Tracking the Week. On Monday, the Minister of Power, Adibayo Adilabu, refuted reports on some social media platforms that an explosion occurred at Zungeru Power on Monday. According to the minister, the Zungeru Power plant is on the grid and the plant is running at optimum capacity. Correspondent Kuluju reports that the Special Advisor Strategic Communication and Media Relations to the Minister, Bolaji Tunji, in a statement in Abuja, quoted the minister saying that the report of an explosion is a figment of the imagination of the purveyors of such information. The minister disclosed that he has been in touch with the Imagine Director of Mainstream Energy and assured that nothing of such took place in Zungeru. He maintained that the plant is working and it continues to supply to the greed, adding that he has video evidence from Zungeru that nothing like that occurred today and that whoever is concerned should go there to find out. The minister described the report as rather unfortunate that people will sit down somewhere and cook up this sort of story, saying people should desist from creating unnecessary panic. Adelabo assured Nigerians of adequate supply of energy, noting that Nigerians have witnessed the worst in the sector, just as he promised incremental supply of power. And still on Monday, a federal high court in Abuja dismissed a one billion naira suit filed by Inandi Kanu, detained leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, against the federal government and Department of State Services DSS. Justice Dick James Omotosho, in a judgment held that Kanu failed to provide credible evidence to back his alleged violation of his fundamental rights by the defendant. Justice Omotosho held that the claims that Kanu was denied unhindered access to his lawyers by the operators of the Department of State Services and that the officials eavesdropped on his conversation with his lawyer in the preparation of his defense could not be established. Report has it that the IPOB leader, through his lawyer, a lawyer, Jimako, had sued the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Attorney General of the Federation, DSS, and its DG, as first to fourth respondents, respectively. In the originating summons, dated and filed on December 4, 2023, the applicant prayed for eight reliefs. He sought a declaration that the respondent's act of forcible seizure and photocopying of confidential legal documents pertaining to facilitating the preparation of his defense, which were brought to him at the respondent's detention facility by his lawyers, amounted to denial of his right to be defended by legal practitioners of his own choice. He also sought a declaration that the respondent's act of preventing his counsel from taking note of details of counsel's unprofessional discussions, consultations with him, and VSS detention was unlawful. On Tuesday, the House of Representatives denounced the recent suicide bombing in Goza, Bruno State, which resulted in a loss of innocent lives and injuries to many. The lawmakers, however, urged security agencies to intensify their effort to contain the situation and to prevent a reoccurrence. The decision followed a motion sponsored by Bruno State lawmaker Honorable Ahmed Jaha, who condemned the attack, describing it as heinous act. Lawmakers in the contributions to the motion expressed concern and reservations about the incident. They were worried that terrorism, which was seen as reduced, is now rearing its ugly head again. The lower chamber also urged the federal and state government to take immediate action to contain the cholera outbreak in the country. The lawmakers mandated the Committee on Orientation, Ethics and Values to oversee public education and enlightenment on personal hygiene. The resolution followed a motion by the minority leader, Honorable Kingsley Chinda, who expressed concern over the rapid spread of the disease in Lagos and other parts of the country, amidst reports of vaccine shortages and escalating death tolls. They, however, emphasized the need for swift intervention to prevent further spread and mitigate potential harm to public health. On agriculture, the Green Chamber also urged the federal government, in collaboration with states, to designate at least 18,000 hectares of arable land in each of the six geopolitical zones as geo-agricultural zones. The House, however, mandated the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security to allocate the demarcated lands based on comparative advantage in crop cultivation to optimize agricultural productivity in the country. And still on Tuesday, the Nigerian Senate urged the Nigerian Metrological Agency, NIMET, to consistently inform and educate the public on climate change ahead of time. The resolution was made on Tuesday following an additional prayer by Senator Dafe Akmaye, representing Delta Central, who called for NIMET to routinely provide flooding predictions to the public as a standard practice. 
The sponsor of the motion, Senator Cyril Oluwole from Ekiti North, highlighted the urgent need to offer palliative support to the victims of recent windstorm in the Ipao, Itapaji, and Okeako communities in Ekiti State. He pointed out that the incident has left many homeless and wondered if immediate assistance is not provided, food security in the Algerian district will be severely impacted. The Deputy Senate President, Barao Jibrin, also contributed to the discussion, urging the relevant authorities to deliver the necessary palliatives to the affected communities. The Deputy Senate President, Barao Jibrin, also contributed to the discussion, urging the relevant authorities to deliver the necessary palliative to the affected communities. On Wednesday, senators from the southeast region of Nigeria in Abuja pleaded passionately with President Bola Tinubu to order the release of the detained Biafra nation agitator in Ambikan. The senators, numbering 15 and led by a former Abia State Deputy Governor, Senator Eninaya Abaribe, claimed that unless Kanu is released, the social and economic activities in the southeast region will continue to be stagnant. Correspondent Kulu Ojo reports that members of the Kakus held a closed door meeting with the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Prince Latif Fagwemi, where a letter where he did beg Tinubu to release Kanu was delivered for onward passage to the presidency. Addressing judiciary correspondents immediately after the closed door meeting, Abaribe, who spoke on behalf of his colleagues, lamented that the economy and social life in Southeast had suffered enough due to the continued incarceration of the Biafra Nation agitator. Abaribe noted that grave concern that the peaceful demand of the detained IPOB leader had been hijacked by hoodlums and hardened criminals, leading to wanton killings of innocent people, including security operatives. The former Abia State Deputy Governor told newsmen that he had already met with Kanu at the headquarters of the Department of State Services in Abuja and that Kanu had agreed to abide by any conditional release. And still on Wednesday, the Governor of Benue State, Yassint Alia, declared a 24 hour call for Nukom local government area of Benue State with effects from 3 p.m. on Wednesday. This follows the grave security situation in the region that led to the wanton destruction of property, leading to instability of the area. The governor, through his deputy, Dr. Sam Ode, therefore directed that beginning from Wednesday, 3rd of July, a curfew be imposed on Nukom local government and its environs beginning from 3 p.m. to 3 p.m. of the next day. The curfew was observed from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. beginning from Thursday, 4th of July. On to further notice, the governor called for CAM as security operatives had been deployed in their numbers to keep the peace in Nukom in particular and the Sankara region at large. And on Thursday, President Bola Tinubu inaugurated the Presidential Economic Coordination Council with the aim of stabilizing the economy and grow business environments in an elevated manner. The council is made up of the Presidential Economic Management Team, the National Assembly Leadership, the sub-nationals through the Governor's Forum and top players of the financial and business sectors. The committee is expected to access a total of two trillion naira for the assignment, which include improving the health and welfare of Nigerians, power and energy, as well as agriculture and food security in the country. For the president, the reason for the committee is in line with his renewed hope agenda. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister for Economy, Wale Adun, told journalists that the package is largely to rejuvenate the critical sectors of the economy and make food production, security and nutrition as a priority areas to concentrate. The Council is also expected to maximize government strategies to scale up all production to 2 million barrels per day for increased revenue and improved social protection for the Nigerian populace. Representatives of the business and financial sectors commanded President Tinubu's ongoing effort to revive the economy while assuring Nigerians of better opportunities and turn around business environments that can foster human capital development as soon as possible. And still on Thursday, Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU Unilag, Council staged a protest rally within the school campus, expressing a displeasure about the indifferent stance of the Nigerian government about their demands. According to ASU, most of the demands calling on Nigeria to be part of the agreement reached with the government in 2009. Galaxy News correspondent Lebi Joseph was there and he stated that marching through the major roads of the university campus, ASU members comprises of professors and doctors 
and the academic community. Among the demands is inclusion of signing of the renegotiated Asu Federal Government Agreement based on the Professor Nimi Briggs Committee Report and funding of revitalization of public universities as party captured in the 2023 Federal Government Budget. Students also came out in solidarity with the protesting lecturers with one voice that government should effect meaningful changes in the university education system for better results. And on Friday, Vice President Kashim Shatima called for a significant shift from dependence on oil to all the critical sectors with attractive investment returns in Nigeria. He identified agriculture, manufacturing, renewable energy, and digital innovation among other sectors as potential investment ground to explore, saying they align with the nation's development priorities outlined in the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. Speaking during the existing Foreign Direct Investors Roundtable, Vice President Kashim Shatima noted that the eight-point agenda of the Renewed Hope Administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu signals diverse avenues for investment from agriculture to renewable energy. Senator Shatima assured investors and other development partners of a business environment that is characterized by transparency, accountability and regulatory certainty, even as he implored them to recognize the indispensable role of public-private partnership in mobilizing resources, sharing expertise and mitigating investment risk. The VP observed that the non-oil sector contributing 93.62% to Nigeria's GDP in the first quarter of 2024. It is imperative to explore the critical sectors of the nation's economy. And still on Friday, the House representatives called for an increase in the budgetary allocation to the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities for better performance. The Chairman House Committee on Disabilities Matter, Honorable Bashiru Dawudu, made a disclosure during an oversight function to the Commission in Abuja. Members of the committee, led by the Chairman, Honorable Bashiru Dawudu, were received to the Commission by the Executive Secretary, National Commission for Persons with Disability, James Lalu. The Chairman of the Committee stated that the exercise was in line with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to look into the allocation to the Ministry. Speaking with journalists after the exercise, Honorable Dawudu start stated, having gone through the presentation made by the Executive Secretary of the Commission, there was an urgent need to increase the budgetly allocation to the Commission on the basis of the 5 million Nigerians with disabilities in the country for smooth running of the Commission's activities. He declared that any ministries, departments and agencies and other organizations who are yet to comply with accessibility standard have reached the expiration of five years' monotarium. And that's all we have on Tracking the Week.